Welcome to Open at Microsoft. Uh, Neil here from Portana, and I have uh, Ali with me here. Uh, today, we're going to give you a quick demonstration around Azure ACI. Uh, this is episode three um, of Portana uh, at Open at Microsoft. Um, so if you want to, to see what Portana does, go back to episode one. If you want to see how we help you with GitOps pipelines, go see episode two. Uh, but today is very much focused on Azure ACI and, and using Azure ACI within Portana. Uh, welcome to the show. We are going to be uh, giving you a demonstration of Portana managing Azure ACI today. Um, Portana's uh, goal in life is to make it simpler to manage applications running in containers, no matter where and how they run. Um, and ACI is a, a very well-respected platform and mechanism for running containers um, in, in the cloud. Uh, it is, in fact, serverless containers. And uh, we have Ali here today, uh, who is the lead developer for this feature in Portana and is going to be showing off how it works. Um, what we have, so ACI has been in Portana now for probably two years, two and a half years. Um, it was a feature we added a while back uh, off, off uh, early, early demand. Um, however, what we've seen recently is actually uh, quite a strong uptick in demand for ACI, uh, especially uh, off the AI uh, kind of boom. Um, the ability to, to run GPU workloads in ACI to, to do uh, analytics and other, other, other data analysis um, has sort of kicked back off the, the, the ACI demand. Um, and so we actually enhanced the, the, the feature in Portana off the back of, of net new uh, customer um, interest. So Ali, over to you and you can show us what you have created. Cool. So let's bring up the screen. Sweet. So in ACI, we've done a few changes. So the main thing is for this container table here. There's three things that we have updated. We've given you more options to create containers um, within ACI from Portana. We also have made it a lot easier to manage these containers in bulk. And we've given you more ways to view and troubleshoot these containers that are running or stopped or any other state that you have them in. So firstly, in this table here, We've added some extra columns. They have, we've added the resource group, the location the container's in, uh, its state, and also any tags that you might have set for it. So yeah, nice little one here. And yeah, that's the main thing in this table. And we'll head to the add container form and show all the extra things we've added in here. So, in this view, we've added yeah, tags. We've added the option to select private networks, uh, the option to add also volumes and GPUs. So let's make a Nginx container. And let's make some tags, maybe make it test is true. And here in the network settings, we can We've currently got it as a public network, which is probably best for a web server, but I'll show you uh, the options for private networks. So here you can select virtual networks that you've set up within Azure uh, for the location that you've selected and the resource group and subscription that you're part of. And also you'll notice that we've just got some handy hints to show what locations have virtual networks available. So let's, cool, I'll select, select a virtual network from the team that I'm part of, which is, yeah, this RADS, which stands for Rockstars. Cool, we've got that set. And now down here in volumes, volumes here gives you the option to mount an Azure file share as a volume for the container. So then you've got some data persistence even after container restarts. 
So let's select one that I have already made within Azure and just paste in an account key as well. Hopefully that's all hidden <laughs> for you guys. And we'll just mount it in a kind of temp path for now. And down here is the GPU section. So here it's the GPU section is um, a feature that is yours recently added, which allows you to attach one or many GPUs to help run a particular container. So it could be for AI tasks like Neil was mentioning. So you can select yeah, a GPU type and also the count of it. I'm going to disable it just because our particular um, Azure account doesn't have access to this preview feature at the moment. And also, finally, one thing that I do want to highlight, it's not new, but it's really powerful, is this access control down the bottom. So in Portainer, you can kind of manage access to pretty much every resource, including these Azure containers, for users that you've made from within Portainer. So currently, I've got it set. So just I have access to this Azure container instance but I can say, have it restricted and just give one of the users like Jane access to it. And let's create it and head back to the table. So yeah, right now it's kind of pulling the image and deploying it. And also, yeah, we'll be kind of publishing it. For this one, it will be on an internal yeah, virtual network. Cool. So one of the things I want to highlight in this section is that we've made it much easier to manage these containers in bulk. It's quite similar to the containers table for a regular Docker environment, if you're familiar with Portainer. So you can select, say, all or just some of the containers, and you can stop them in bulk with a couple of clicks. You can remove them if you want or restart them. And yeah, makes it really easy. I'll, yeah, I'll start up all those again. And yeah, let's get into the details of one. We'll go into, go into this Nginx one that we've just created. Yeah, here we've just made it a lot kind of, we've grouped it and made it a lot more simple to see some of the core details. So. Yeah, the state of it, which I really care about, um, where it's published at, uh, virtual network or tags that it has. And down here is more a whole section on the resources that kind of are attached to it. And you can even see kind of this file share being mounted. Some of the other things that I might want to see is any events relating to starting up this container or while it's running. So here, we've added a new table, which has all the events that relate to, yeah, getting that container started, and also any events that relate to the container group, in case you've started, yeah, some in Azure with more than one container. If there are any warning messages for these containers, they will bubble up as well, so you'll see like a little kind of a little uh, a little tag up here, which will kind of notify you that you should maybe check and yeah, makes it really easy to troubleshoot. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much all the cool new changes that we've made to Azure Container Instances. Uh, in summary, we've made it easier and given you more options to create containers. <laughs> We've made it much more simple to manage them in bulk, and we've given you more ways to see the details and troubleshoot the containers that you have running. Thank you. Yeah, and this this is key here because we, we've now got a very high degree of uh, UX consistency. Uh, for the users of Portainer. So it doesn't matter if they are managing Docker on their machine or Docker inside their own data center, um, some Kubernetes clusters or, or ACI. The experience 
uh, is very similar within Portana. The user access control is the same. The role-based access control is the same. The user authentication is all the same. So you can really centralize access and governance to all of these environments, no matter where they are. So you know, again, Portana's goal is to make it easy for you to, to deploy and manage your applications that so happen to run in containers. The platform itself, you know, we, we want to support any and every platform that's there available. So this is a feature coming in a version of Portana that will be released very, very soon. Um, have a have have a try, um, yeah. Try out ACI if you if you haven't looked at ACI in a while. Have a look. It's a it, it's a very very powerful tool. And try out Portana sitting on top of it. So that's all.